going to go out and plant some cover crops in the garden. Let's go. This is the kind of day that makes me love living in Oregon. It is so beautiful. It is green grass, vivid green, blue skies, and white puffy clouds. How stunning is that? That is why I live here. So the gardens that we're going to be working in today are these right here behind me. I need to remove all of the old plants. I need to remove the old corn stalks. I also need to transplant these strawberries into a pot because we're gonna rework that whole area anyway, so I'll just overwinter them in, <laughs> I'll overwinter them in a pot in the greenhouse. And then we'll also plant some cover crops, oh, that's the weeping cherry, in that bed over there. Um, but I need to remove the cucumbers that are currently in there. So we're gonna do that. We have ever-bearing strawberries and they really live up to their name. Check these guys out. It is October and we're getting strawberries. I love this plant. Even though it's sunny, it is about 58 degrees out, so the ratty sweater is making an appearance today. Let's go. I actually kept this corn in the garden for a reason. It wasn't out of pure laziness. I wanted to decorate with it and I wanted to dry it a little bit more, but it looks like it got some black spot and so I just never really got that opportunity. I'm not sure if this is black spot or just standard mold. Either way, I don't want to decorate with it anymore, so I'm gonna yank it out and work the area over and take all the weeds out as well. does it have mold or black spot whatever this is it also has a major aphid infestation so all of those little black things on the green part of the stalk those are aphids so I will be glad to get rid of these and burn them You might be looking at this tomato plant wondering why I'm ripping it out, but that's because we're getting so much water now that the tomatoes are growing unevenly and they're bursting, they're splitting down the sides and then growing mold in those splits. So we can't actually use them or eat them, so I'm tearing them out. When I'm talking about them splitting and getting mold, this is what I'm talking about. And that's just gonna be a vector for disease and I don't wanna have disease in my garden for next year, so I'm gonna take them out because there's nothing we can use on any of these plants. They're all split and molding. I think this one is dead. This one doesn't seem to be splitting as badly. All of the tomatoes actually seem pretty healthy and ripening well. So I'm just gonna leave it in the garden and work around it. All right, time to take them to the burn pile. Oh my gosh, it's hot. So apparently 58 degrees is more than warm enough when you start moving. Well, we have some very happy peepers. Let's see if my hat won't get in the way. Look at that. Happy peepers and now my garden is ready to be reseeded with a cover crop. If you're wondering what cover crops are. Cover crops are crops that you grow in your garden or sometimes in large agricultural productions that help put nutrients back into the soil, they help moisture be retained in the soil, and they help beneficial insects and just create a nice microbiome within the garden soil that help benefit the next crop. For my cover crop, I chose white Dutch clover. Many people use crimson clover, but crimson clover can be bad for sheep. The verdict is still out. I know some of it can cause infertility issues, and not that we're ever breeding our animals. They're all 
hole fixed, but it's still something that I don't want to mess with because if it spreads into the field, we'll never be able to get rid of it effectively, and that's just not something I want to risk. So I'm growing white Dutch clover, and that is what I'm going to put in the garden now, and that's a cover crop that gives my soil good nutrients. It will fix nitrogen into the soil, which many crops take out, and it's just a really good way to overwinter your garden. If this is your first year doing a cover crop, I highly recommend you look up what crops grow well in your area. So there were a couple of different options I could have gone with. There are some annual grasses, things like buckwheat I could have used, but I chose to go with white clover because in the end, we're going to be doing a fleur de lawn seed mix in this area that includes micro clover. And that way, if this clover kind of gets out of hand and spreads everywhere, I won't be upset because it'll just blend right in with the lawn mix that we're going to be using in this garden area anyway. But do your research because an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. The more and more I learn about working in the garden, the more and more I learn that just doing a little bit of research ahead of time will make a vast difference in how things turn out in the long run. We're going to move those strawberries that are right back there. They are excellent ever-bearing strawberries and I'm really hoping that by putting them in the greenhouse this year they don't really go dormant and they just continue to produce fruit throughout the winter. We'll see, but that would be really exciting if that's something that happened from a result of this. Got my shovel. I am hoping these will be big enough. I will be using five gallon buckets to transplant our strawberries into and I'm just going to use the garden soil. My hope is not to disturb their root balls almost at all. If I can just keep them happy and producing through the rest of winter, that will be a huge accomplishment. I'm gonna make sure I get all the fruit off of this first so that I don't lose any to transplanting. are notorious for having a ton of runners and spreading pretty voraciously. If you've ever encountered wild strawberries or even just the standard strawberries that you put in your garden, you'll know that if you don't keep them in check, they will spread pretty rapidly. I have allowed these to spread because I knew I was digging them up and so it didn't really bother me that they were getting a bit out of hand. And now it just gives me more starts to work with. So that's fine with me. But runners for strawberries are sent out like this. So they'll send out little vines from one plant to another, and then each little vine will root down and create its own plant, which is pretty spectacular. I mean, that's a wonderful way for a plant to reproduce, but it does mean that it can spread really easily and you have to stay on top of it if you don't want it to take over. I could thin out my strawberry crop, but because I'm transplanting it and I don't know what will survive and what won't, I want to have as many starts as possible so that I can put those in the new garden. For some of these, you can see that they are almost like those um, clown handkerchief things where they just keep going. You can just clip them off like that if you would like to. I have found that they are not hurt by this at all. Like I said, strawberries are, they're a survivor, at least for us. They're, they're quite um, voracious in their growth. So look at this plant, for instance. This I don't even think was one of the original plants. This itself was its own runner at one point and then turned into this pretty, pretty good sized plant. And then it sent out its own runners, which sent out its own runners, which sent out its own runners. So it's a strawberry chain.
In case you're wondering what kind of strawberries these are, these are seascape strawberries. They are ever bearing. They are ever bearing and delicious. getting warm enough that I don't want the sweater but I don't want my arms to burn either so we're gonna put on this sun shirt and get back to work Okay, so I just found lettuce that is growing that I'm pretty sure is from the spring and it's the seeds that didn't sprout. So I also found, remember all those seedlings when I cleaned out the other garden bed? There's a lot more. Come look. All of these, I believe, are lettuce. They look like little lettuce seedlings. I did have a row of lettuce this way in the spring and summer. So I'm thinking that these were seeds that maybe got rolled around by Moomy or something like that, but these look like lettuce leaves. Check this out. Tell me these don't look like lettuce leaves. Look at this. These, I'm pretty sure, are little lettuce leaves. So I might just let them grow and see what they turn into because why not? We might get some lettuce out of the deal. Remember the other garden bed that I already cleaned out? Well, those seedlings have exploded. So all over here are seedlings from flowers that I planted. And I don't know if I'm ever going to get rid of them now. I am fairly certain all of these are little flower seedlings. I don't think that these are weeds. I think these are flower seedlings. Oh no. Oh no, everyone. Oh, I'm in trouble. Oh, look, twine. If you haven't seen my twine story, I'll link it up here. I wonder which one is the aggressive self-seeder or maybe all of them are and I just, I should have read the packet more carefully as opposed to impulsively putting them in the garden bed. Oh no. Uh, I guess I'll be cleaning out this bed again too. moments like this that I think maybe I should have used the tractor. What is this, my third or fourth trip out to the burn pile? Don't plant seeds that you don't know if they're gonna self-seed and get pretty aggressive. So we've cleaned up all the beds, which is really pretty easy work. I just ripped out all the plants, put them on the burn pile. I used my stirrup hoe, not a D-tool, a stirrup hoe. If you saw my other gardening bed clean out video, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'll pop that up here. I used my stirrup hoe and weeded the garden and then I raked up all of those loose weeds and I'm going to clean those out and throw them away. After I do that last bit of cleanup, I am then ready to seed. And I left the little lettuce seedlings that I had just found randomly that I think were from this spring and they just didn't germinate in the spring and they germinated now. So I left those because why not? If we get lettuce out of the deal, that's great. If we don't, not a big deal. And then I also left those poor beets that I left from my last gardening video. And again, it's not out of any planned garden tricks. It is just pure lack of time and inability to process them right now. So they're still gonna just sit there for a while. But I am gonna seed around them and then we're going to be done. Okay, I am ready to spread the seed. The seed I got is white Dutch clover and it is from a local nursery here in Oregon in Corvallis. 
and I will be spreading it just by hand because the seeds are so small they can't be spread by our seeder. So I will just be spreading it by hand throughout the garden space and we are due for rain so I don't have to water I don't think. I think I'll just spread it out by hand and then let mother nature take its course. Oh my gosh it smells good. Yum. Everything, by the way, is yum. All the time yum. Because these seeds are too small for our cedar, I'm just going to use a little scoop and use that to sprinkle it around. Kind of like adding sugar to caramelize over the top of a dessert. I liked the idea that they're starting to use clover instead of grass because if any of you have ever tried to get rid of clover in your lawn you'll notice that it just keeps coming and so since it's green and it's beautiful and it helps pollinators which i think is fantastic and i think it's great that we're using it as a lawn mix that's another big advantage of cover crops is they keep weeds at bay by choking out the available growing space which I think is fantastic. it up for today guys if you like this video go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and subscribe down below for more videos like this let me know in the comment section what you're doing in your garden if you're growing a cover crop let me know what kind I'm always interested in tips and tricks from other gardeners especially because I am new to the cover crop game so if you're growing a cover crop let me know in the comment section down below and until next time I'll see you in the next video